Through the windless night we sail to watch the timeless dance unfold. Out of joy we share the tale to any who would have it told. Time, it seems, doesn't flow, for some it's fast, for others slow. In what to one race is no time at all, another race may rise and fall. The virus spread like burning fire, the sea of dread rose higher and higher. The crystal ones had to fight by causing suns to ignite. Self-defense, it is their right. Back when all the stars were young, before the minstrel songs were sung, when this galaxy was new, there came from far the crystal few. Gradually they spread through space, they were the first, the only race. And harder still to recognize that which lies before one's eyes. So many races have believed in only what was preconceived. That which is ancient may be new, it all depends on point of view. From inward out the races flee, searching for a place to hide, ever in a wave of war, and on the crest the strongest ride. We are the watchers of the dance, many wonder at us. But how could there not be an audience for the greatest of all comedies? That last one doesn't really rhyme. This is Mysterious JG. That was the Song of the Minstrels from Starflight, because I didn't really feel like wandering around and uh, hoping to encounter them enough times to hear all the pieces. Uh, apologies for the bad sound quality in the last video. We're going to have to learn to live with it and move on. And speaking of last videos, this will most likely be the last video of Let's Play Starflight. Um, it's been a fun, if relatively short ride. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. We're going to finish things off this time out. And uh, I'll invite you guys to comment. To let me know what you liked, what you didn't like. And uh, if you have any suggestions for uh, crew members for the crew of Starflight 2. Because I'm toying with whether I want to make it the same crew or uh, come up with new names. So that, uh, you know, <laughs> Great Con got a chance to explore the universe. But um, it seems only fair that uh, Alicia should also get a chance. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, and the rule of is going to be pretty much uh, characters from other games of LP is uh, how it's going to work. But anyway, uh, we're going to resume our current game. We're going to resume our current game. Self police warning loading the game in progress. I believe, and this is one of the reasons uh, we had bad sound in the last video. I apologize for that. One of the reasons that I stuck with the bad sound version is that I saved, um, and if I wanted to re record the video, I couldn't have started from the appropriate place, and I would have had to track down the spemmin to get the information on the Ulek brain world again for, in order for you guys to see it. And also the really fun conversation where they explained that they fooled the Gazotoid into liking them by sitting in pools of water while communicating with the Gazertoid. Uh, I could have done post-commentary. I really don't like doing post-commentary unless... Like, occasionally, um, I can rope Bobo into helping me, and it's just kind of a neat change of pace to have an LP I've been doing by myself. We'll have a video pop up here or there where Bobo comes in to do guest commentary with me after the fact, but generally, I don't like to do it, and uh, this is no exception. Especially, well, I can't do it now. Bobo might have had some fun insights into this game. Uh, but uh, that would involve putting off this next video by over a month in order to do post-commentary with Bobo. Because I am going home in a month, yay! But that's really not what we're here to talk about. For anyone who's just joined me for this LP and doesn't know, my circumstance now is that I'm in Afghanistan. But as you can probably tell by my voice uh, and accent, I am an American and... Uh, I'm a typical American. Let me show you how we come into a bar. I'm a typical American, and uh, we'll be heading back to the States where I will have significantly better uh, internet capabilities. Although my computer will not get any better because this laptop I'm using now is pretty freaking awesome. And I bought it as a gift using money, as cash money as I made in Afghanistan. Anyway, we're going to launch our security cast. Our security code is Heaven Black Egg VLOX. We know what, um, yeah, and, and over the course of this, we've learned what most of the locations 
that pop up in the game, or in the uh, Starflight code wheel, are Heaven is, of course, the planet that was being guarded by the Meccans for the Noah Colonists. That, however, does not change the fact that I can't freaking find it on the code wheel. Heaven. The Black Egg is, of course, the explosive that we're going to use to destroy the Crystal Planet, and if we did some more talking to people, we might find enough clues to find two Black Eggs. But we've only got one. And Velox are, of course, the race of arrogant but generally well-meaning insects who are probably not real happy with us because we stole their small egg. But uh, whether they realize it or not, they too will be killed by the the um, by the the Armageddon that's being unleashed by the Crystal Planet. It's going to kill the Velox too. Velox religion says otherwise. Uh, you know, maybe I'm being arrogant and not listening to the Velox religion, but I have a feeling that Velox too will be killed by this thing. So it's their best in it's in their best interests uh, that we be allowed to steal their sacred artifact and do what we're doing. On the other hand, there's very little that can be said. Um, you get into the Doctor Who, do I have the right to, you know, does Tom Baker have the right to kill the Daleks in their infancy kind of questions with, is it okay for us to blow up the Ulek brain world? The Ulek don't really seem like very nice guys. Uh, like I kind of let slip in the last video, I really shouldn't have talked about this. We will find out, if you're paying attention to some of the clues, it's not part of the main plot really, but we'll find out a little bit more about the Ulek in the next game. Uh, which will give us a little bit more insight into whether or not it's okay to blow up the Ulek brain world. But for right now, all I can think of is they're a species we don't understand, and we appear to have the ability to kill them outright. And that doesn't seem like a good thing to do. Anyway, we're opening the docking bay doors, Hal. Awesome takeoff. I did a little bit of reading uh, when I was researching to get the minstrel song lyrics. Read a little bit about the differences between the Genesis and the PC game. And uh, while, you know, obviously my heart um, will always be with the uh, PC game because that's the one I grew up with. Um, I'll have to say that the specific differences I read about do make it sound like the Genesis game. And obviously, I mean, much, much newer. I mean... Or maybe it was Master System and not Genesis. But either way, um, I just remember it was one of the Sega Home Systems. And yeah, clearly, the changes that were made were for the better. Um, even if some of them were sound like annoying, like, oh, you have to buy pontoons to get the uh, terrain vehicle to go on water. And there's really no point in the game where it would ever need to go on water. But you get more money, too. So when they give you more stuff to buy, more ways to customize things, it's really, you know, overall, it's for the best. Now, um... What we need to do is go get the crystal cone. We know from uh, the really, the thing in this game that just gives everything away, the big location where you find this, you're most of the way to winning the game, was the um, the human Eloan uh, Institute on Acteron 6, which told us everything we need to win the game. And... Um, the last thing that we don't have is the crystal cone. Now I'm a little surprised the, uh, the Ulek were able to destroy us because although I haven't gotten to showcase it, that crystal artifact we picked up in that city of the ancients in Spemin space is actually supposed to teleport your ship out of danger when it's you know almost destroyed. Apparently it didn't fire in time, or the Ulek killed me so quickly because I'm so incompetent. They didn't have a chance to save us. But that didn't happen. That, that has been undone by the magic of loading state. So what we need to do now is just uh, get the crystal cone, which is in a planet in Ulek space, and um, then fly to the uh, crystal planet and deal with the crystal planet. You are here. The Ulek brain world, which we visited in the last video, was, was it right here? No. It was this pink one, wasn't it? Yeah. The Ulek brain world is there. And uh, the crystal cone is actually located... 2198. Ulek space is huge, but the crystal cone is on the far end of it. From the Ulek brain world. And it's located in this nebula. That's where we have to go. Spemin gave us a list of jump coordinates, which could be helpful. The first of those... 
was at 106, 139. So let's head there. And hope we don't run into the VLOX. Because I just don't. Wait, 106, 139, and we have to fly up a bit. So I think we are going into VLOX space. Or maybe we're getting into spam in space here. We're kind of getting into spam in space, I think. Not too worried about encountering them. So that warped us. Pretty good ways, and actually got us a lot closer to uh, our destination. But we'll go to 64, 186. Do not want to get the hell out of here. Probably Ulek. Oh, it's a Mysterion. Well, I don't really have time to worry about them. Although it's fun to scan them. Yeah, I was thinking it was a Ulek, and when I saw it was only one, I was like, "It's just one Ulek. That's fine." It's a Mysterion. Point zero zero four times the size of our ship. I don't really feel like talking to them because I just read their whole song. Certainly not going to hurt it though. It's like, sorry, Mr. Mysterion, or, uh, Minstrel, we got other stuff to worry about. This took us even closer, and the last one is supposed to be 35186. So these three were clearly meant to make it much easier and safer to get. I mean, it's not just that it takes you deep into Ulek territory, it takes you right up to where we need to go to get the crystal cone. 2198. So yeah, this was obviously designed this way. So 2198. Basically, I need to get here. It took us like right there. And it's the first planet in the system. And you don't encounter any Ulek. Because it's not a planet that they're guarding or anything. They have no idea there's anything important here. We don't know... Well, we don't know what they think about anything, frankly. They might know there's something desperately important here, but, um... Whatever. If they really knew who we are, would they be stopping us from destroying the Crystal Planet? I kind of doubt it. Crystal Planet is not... F friends with the Ulek, either. It's gonna destroy them and everyone else. Ulek believe in genocide of other species, it seems. I can't imagine they believe in Omnicide. Healing Spirit through death or whatever. Alright. So we're landing in the water. So we'd need pontoons if this was the Sega version. But we should be okay. It is hazy. It is Optimus Prime. Sorry. We can head over here and a crystal cone. What do you know? And there's no message or anything. It's just a crystal cone. One of those little things they, I mean, you'd think they would have written some kind of explanation for it. No, we have no idea why the crystal cone is here or how the people at the Institute on Acteron know it's there. That's just flat out. You hit a certain point in the game. It's like, you gotta go here and get this. Just do it. Don't ask questions. And so we shall. I think I've been in Ulex space long enough. Let's get out of here. I, you know, I intended for our little visit with the Ulex to last longer than it did. I, I figured we'd be able to scan more than one of their ships and check them out before I got killed, but no. That last video as a reminder. It's like the Gazertoid, not as bad as I remembered. The Ulek, very much instant instant death. And that's probably them. There's more than one. Now we may be safely out of Ulek space and into spam in space now, but I'm not gonna take any chances. I'm booking out of here as fast as I can. And we're back into like the overlap between Spem and Velox space. So now, I can stop into Starport, let them analyze the crystal cone. They're not going to be able to tell me what it is. They couldn't tell me what any of the crystal things did. 
So instead, we will go to the crystal planet. You may remember that as a planet we visited before that melted our ship. Uh, looking for where I wrote down 195, 152, if it hasn't moved. Which it could, the crystal planet is mobile. But it should be at 195, 152. So let's head there. Post haste. Yep, we should be saying something interesting or insightful now. Nothing's coming to mind. Who are you, friend? Oh, Mysterion. Don't really care about these guys. Keep calling the minstrels Mysterion. That's an actual Mysterion right there. And it's hanging around right outside the crystal planet, which is, of course, being filled a thousand girls, a thousand thrills, a million ways to spend your time. That might be the crystal ship I'm thinking of. Orbit established. Okay, so it's ammonium, hydrogen, atmosphere, methanol, and ethanol, hydrosphere, the lithosphere is endurium, endurium, endurium. The planet seems to be made of endurium. It's about one times our gravity, predominant surface unknown. Atmospheric density is very thin, Temper temperature is searing to inferno, no weather. Interesting. When we try to land, it's a gray, featureless planet, and there is a little thing telling us to land there. The reason that thing is telling us to land there is because of the crystal cone. Without the crystal cone, we wouldn't get that. So we'll descend down under the planet, which is apparently incredibly flat. It is clear. Hey, there's Endorium. The train is smooth and featureless. I was trying to show you that if you look around, it's the only planet that has Endorium. Without necessarily needing for there to be ancient ruins. You just we can drive around and you just find clusters of endurium. Because the planet's made of endurium. Anyway, look at this. A ruin, a message. A man, a plan, a canal, Panama. Let's listen to the message. Log entry 8838 Commander McConnell, entry 1. I have successfully teleported the Crystal Planet. I am dizzy and have experienced a profound sense of disorientation, but other than that, I seem to be fine. The control nexus is visible from this point. It would seem that the electromagnetic field around the Crystal Planet is, in fact, blocking communication since it has been an hour and I have still received no transmission from Crystal Base 1. I am therefore writing in this log as planned and will attempt to find a safe place for it before the explosion. I have reached the control center and have set the charges. It appears to be a massive ruin of the ancients. The queer crystalline lumps of endurium are everywhere here. I have just had an astounding experience. I can hardly believe it, but I have seemed to have made telepathic contact with the ancients. They are here, on the crystal planet, controlling it. I wish there was some way for me to communicate what I have found. The explosion is set for T-40 minutes. In the event that the crystal planet is not destroyed, I can only hope that this log is found by someone. Well, the crystal planet wasn't destroyed, although you seem to destroy the ancient ruins. 
I can hardly believe it. These weird lumps are actually intelligent life. The ancients are Endurium, and we have spent hundreds of years hunting them to burn for fuel on our ships. Oh, shit. <laughs> well. Well, wow. Their metabolism is so much slower than ours, they live in an entirely different time framework. I don't think they even know we are sentient. I believe it was only because of a link through the crystal planet that contact was made at all. This crystal planet was their last defense. I can hardly blame them. Carbon-based life must have seemed something like a virus to them. Just the same, I hope that ex the explosion works. It looks like at, at this point, it's us or them. McConnell. There you go, folks. I was worried that we'd never find where the game explicitly tells you this, but I remember this plot twist pretty well. The ancients, the mysterious ancients that we didn't know anything about, but who always left lumps of endurium fuel at their sites. The endurium fuel, the gift of the ancients that we've used to power all of our technology, is actually the ancients. The ancients are like a crystalline silicon-based life, whose life cycle is much longer than ours. They don't experience time the same way. A lifetime to us is the blink of an eye for them. And therefore, they have no frame of reference to communicate with us. They just were hanging out, hanging out, hanging out with families, having themselves a party. Sorry. They were hanging out, living their lives, which go for eons, and uh, their buddies just kept dying these strange like they, they probably like like the guy said we must have seemed like a virus they couldn't even perceive us we move so quickly we expire so quickly we don't register with them and we were killing them so they set up the crystal planet which was going around killing all carbon-based life because basically for them it was like a high colonic so that seems bad it seems mean that things worked out the way they did. Nevertheless, we're going to save our game. We are going to drop the black egg at this point, the control nexus. We have to drop it here or it won't work. And it's quite possible to accidentally drop it one degree off. That was our last chance to hear the theme music, and I just ruined it. But I landed at 46.45, and I'm thinking probably it was supposed to be 45.45. I'm going to drop the black egg on this device. Yes. I am not going to collect any more Endurium, because I now know they're alive. Although, really, any Endurium I don't collect here is going to die when I blow up the planet. <laughs> hanging out. Hanging out. Hanging out with the family. Having ourselves a party. Sorry. The epidemic. Countdown the, for the black egg. Five, four, three, two, one. Boom. Crystal planet damaged but not destroyed. Outside orbital range. Well, this is why I saved. Because I know that it's possible to goof that up. Revert to my last quick save. Resume the current game. This time I'll do it at 4645. I won't go south by a couple. And I will cut off the theme music, even though, again, we had another last, last chance to hear the theme music. But I cut it off. I'll move up to 4645, and I'll drop the black egg. And if this doesn't work, I'm going to go back into orbit and re-land on the little, uh... Because that, the problem is the, the icon that shows you where to land is actually large enough on this map that it's bigger than one, you know, coordinate longitude latitude coordinate it, that the, the symbol that marks where it is is so big you can point on it and be off by a you know a coordinate or two in uh, north south east or west so let's go see if it worked this time commencing system travel captain we are receiving a countdown transmission of the black egg five four three two one boom 
Planet Obliterated, incoming high priority message. It is with the sincerest gratitude from the people of Arth and the stockholders of Interstell that I present to you and your heroic crew the Interstell Medal of Sublime Achievement, the highest honor accorded to Interstell contractors. <laughs> We're just a bunch of filthy contractors after all. According to Interstell contractors, this award includes a special bonus of 500,000 Mu, the starting amount in the uh, second version of the game, when you return to Starport. Thank you for saving everything that we hold dear. Le Lee V. Malone, Chairman of Interstell, and Transmission. And of course, we do get to hear the music one more time. End of Transmission, Outside Orbital Range. Just hang out. Hang out. Hanging out with my family, having ourselves a party. Now I feel like we should go um, on our way home. We can stop by and um, I don't, th you know, I'm curious now. I don't know. You don't have to stop playing, but I'm not sure what good will come of continuing to play. But I'm going to fly into VLOX space and uh, give back their uh, little item that they want. I think I'm in VLOX space. Yeah, that's VLOX space. So I'll, I'll visit my friends. I don't really think of the Spemin as my friends, although they gave us really useful information. Minus 2 and Y10. So I will say hi to the Velox. Most harmonious greetings, friends and worshippers of Veloxi Grand Lovely. Let us communicating the every time. Hello, we come in peace from the planet Earth. Our scanners show you are have most precious small egg of Veloxi Grand Lovely. You are returned immediately or Veloxi is declaring war. Agreeing? Yes. Of course. We just wanted to borrow it. Is you killing the Spemmins? Yes. Of course, if Loxy are superior all the time, agreeing? Yes. It's like they're quizzing me to make sure we're still friends after that whole you stole the small egg of the Grant Lovely thing. Best idea I have. We just exchanged the many dirty joke and then too much the laughing activity. <laughs> Perhaps someday our young shall play and romp together in blissful light, the blissful light of harmony and friendship. Is the U-Aliens in ours the Veloxi space search for most precious energy crystals of ancients? No. Because we know they're alive and we're not going to be stealing them anymore. I guess us is best friend. Perhaps we will eat together the slimy nodules and many of the most delicious. Do not be afraid of us. We are on a peaceful mission. There is no limit to what our both races can gain from mutual exchange. Is you alien part of Old Empire? No, they didn't like the Old Empire, did they? And it, it would be a faithful answer, true. We is making you honorary Veloxi. Of course, still the inferior alien, but much the better. I think so. Let us embrace one another and sing the songs of friendship, and someday perhaps we shall look upon another and say, Brother... Brother! Best idea I have. We exchanged a mini dirty joke and then too much of laughing activity. It'd be nice if we could actually say goodbye, but no, you just have to terminate communications and leave. Alright, so let's go to 125-100. We gave them back their egg. That makes me feel a little better. I didn't really like the idea that we had to steal it, but it was kind of necessary. I can check in with uh, Interstell. Excuse me, before we end this thing. You keep flying around and buying more weapons, fighting Gazertoid, recommending planets, but, I mean, the objective of the game is accomplished. It's kind of a Grand Theft Auto outer space. No, 
evaluation. Congratulations! As a result of your efforts, our sun is once again stable. All of Arth, and indeed the entire galaxy, owes you to debt which can never be fully repaid. Your heroic exploits will surely become intergalactic legend. Our token bonus of 500,000 mu will allow you to live here on Arth in luxury for many years to come, although we suspect you may use it to further your explorations. Once again, thank you. Now, the Thrin kind of knew what was going on, so we could, uh... Not the Thrin, I mean the Elo one kind of seemed to know that the Crystal Planet was the cause of all the trouble. So I'm kind of curious as to whether... If we go down there and talk to those guys again... Dr. Rembrandt. Uh, the Thrin of the Elo, and if we'll get any new stuff out of them. I doubt it. I don't imagine they have new things to say. But it's just one little thing we can do before we end the LP. Uh, I'm not going to bother to put this in correctly. I'm not going to bother to look it up. The odds that we'll be interrupted by the Interstellar police are pretty low. And if we are, then maybe that's just my excuse to show you what happens when you don't put in the correct code, even with another chance. Just hanging out. Hanging out. Hanging around with the Loxy, worshiping the Grand Lovely. Boom. That'll zap us. Where did that zap us to? Oh, that's actually not useful to me. I'm trying to get just downspin a lot. Unidentified object. Hope it's not the Gazertoid. We surrender, we surrender. Please do not hurt us. We will do anything, anything. Do you want to know the secret location of our home planet? It is at 82148. Destroy the other spelman ships, but spare us, please. So what happens if we're nice to them now? You don't need to be afraid of us. We're nice. We were just messing with you before when we killed a bunch of you. Oh, flash of inspiration. We now see that you are right and we are wrong. Spelman are bad, bad. Thank goodness we have seen this in time. We can now be friends. As representatives of the peoples of Arth, we extend our best wishes and our hope for equitable relations in the future. Of course, we were just wrong about, just joking about blowing you to pieces. Snurg, snurg, snurg. Isn't that a funny joke? Can you tell us about the ancients? We well, you know about Saren. I beg your forgiveness, but I do not know anything about the Saren. What can you tell us, general? Tell us about general info. Saren's flagship. Oh, the ancients built a device called Crystal Pearl, which automatically warps a critically wounded ship out of danger. This is one of the many things we know. Okay, well, whatever. They're not saying anything new. I don't know why I would think the uh, the Thrin almost certainly won't. The Elo one just might. Because clearly they're like super peaceful, happy dudes who actually know what's going on and kind of want to work with you to do something about it to a certain extent. And I think the Elo one are one of the more directly ripped... Like, you know, I've talked about how Star Control 2 was greatly impacted by this game. I think the Elo one are one of the more obvious things where there's a, a race from Star Control 2 that just is the Elo one, but the ones that you can make jokes about eating broccoli and cheese sauce with, yeah, those guys. They just told us where there were ships, and I kind of blanked on it there. Whoa, there's quite a few ships. That is a big group of ships. X2, Y4, huh? Am I detecting Thrin and Elo about to go to war? Are the Gazertoid now following me to try to kill me and get revenge? Any of these things are possible. X1, Y2. Or are these are the Interstellar Police. Hail, art thou friend or foe of the Eloan? We would ask thee f the in friendship and would have thus between us. The choice is thine. See, this is why having somebody with less than perfect score on this is hurting my uh, better communicate. Hello, we come in peace from the peace from the planet Earth. If from thyself to store thou wouldst convert, or else of thee this I prognosticate, thy end is truth's end, literal doom and date. What? 
maybe they'll just say something about how we've uh, saved the universe. So I hope that you guys will recognize the fact that we saved everybody. We ask only that you commit a Lillian violence, nor trespass against us. In return, we offer much. General info. You guys know anything about Saren? Outward of the dead zone lies the zone intermediate. Here, the crystal planet orbits. Completing its task, ere it moves, meh. <laughs> meh. <laughs> we really don't care. Meh. Crystal planet destroying everyone. Meh. Well, they're talking about the crystal planet as though it's still out there, so they clearly don't know that we've already taken care of that. And, uh, hast thou of thine ever partaken of head fruit? No, because head fruit would be like their freaking heads. But no, there's really no point in continuing this. Art thou in any. Art thou in the Institute of Illy in any way affiliated? I don't know what the Institute of Illy is. Maybe it's like a Thrin thing. I'll say yes. They've lowered their shields. Thou art wise in thy peaceful dealings, for the path and knowledge doth lie therein. Blah, 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 all races minded, blah, 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 whatever. Um. What did their ships look like again? I'm just curious. That's a warship, but it's, like, smaller than our ship. But, uh, you know what? LP's over. I thought we'd chat with the Veloxi and the, the Velox, the low one. Ran into the spam without meaning to. I'm sure the Thren have nothing new. I was just wanted to see if anybody had new stuff to say now that we've saved the galaxy, but nobody seems to realize that we have. So, you can continue to play. You can continue to go around looking for colony worlds. There's nothing that you can do except gather lots of moo. I mean, if you really want to, one of the things that people do to keep this game going is try to defeat Ulek in battle. But, uh, that's it. It's over. I hope you had a good time, folks. I did. I enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you guys think. It's, it's, it's a hard game to wrap because there's no ending credits or anything. The game just kind of ends. There's, I really just kind of feel weird about cutting off the recording. Uh, on Maybe I should have cut it off while we are still on that victory screen, but... No, we're done. Um... Thanks uh, for watching. Uh, when we come back in a new LP, uh, we'll be doing Star uh, Starflight 2. Uh, I could do um, the same crew. I didn't really uh, make anything. Uh, it's not like there was dialogue in game. I, I didn't create. I didn't get into a mode where I was pretending. You know, like I'll do in the RPGs sometimes, where I just kind of bored and and fighting monsters to level my party up, and I'll just kind of extemporaneously come up with like dialogue that's supposed to be happening between group members of my team you know like uh goby or Bo complaining that their souls have been trapped by uh karn and his weird morph modes or whatever nothing like that despite the potential for fun with a crew that consists of people like uh great khan and juge leong on the same team together at last this ultimate dream team didn't do much with it. But uh, still, I'm throwing it out there. If you guys have uh, anybody that you'd like to see, yes, thank you again, Elon. If you have anybody that you'd like to see in the next LP on the crew, uh, who's, you know, preferably a character from one of my LPs, um, toss out the name. Otherwise, I'll probably go with the same guys or uh, just pick new guys uh, for my own fun. Um, I need to come up with a new name for a ship, too, unless we just want the Devon 7 to. The Devon 7 is this ship, you know. We need a new ship to go out there. Citizens and Tensons, make thyself. We greet thee in peace. It's like, yeah, 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 you know who we are. Leave us alone. <laughs> Captain Avatar of the Devon 7. We're uh, busy trying to narrate the end of this LP. Was not Arth a Noah colony? Uh, yeah, it was, I think. In sooth are concepts blah blah to blah blah, for they do not require time nor growth and cultivation, and do not breed with them for beauty and for productivity. Let us exchange something something that we may bring something 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 our minds. That's great. The next LP, uh, we won't be running into these guys in space, because we'll be set in a different part of space, but we can still have three lo Thrin, Eloan, and Velox in our crew. And uh, we'll have to come up with, you know, like I said, yeah, you know, give me throw out who you think should be uh, officers in different, you know, it'll be the same officer set up. We'll need a captain, a science officer, a navigator. Very much the mechanics of the game are unchanged. Um, pray do not listen to blah blah things, as the Thrin might say of us. Tis not but empty slander. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm talking in circles. I can't bring my thoughts together, except to say that this LP's over. Um, 
Hast thou been to the dead? Hast thou to the dead whatever been and the ruins of old earth seen? Oh yeah, actually we have. I think if we'd said no, they might have told us where it was. Are you friends or allies of Lin Thrin? Nah. We don't like the Thrin. Friends, meanies. They tricked us into blowing up your planet and forced us to load our game. But yeah, the next game set in a different part of space, uh, so it'll have all different alien species for us to meet. But uh, the species from this game are still part of the Arth, you know, whatever. So they'll still be our crew members and stuff. And we just have to figure out, uh, you know, new people and a new ship name. And uh, the mechanics of the game are very much unchanged, except mining is much less. Um, important as a way to gain money. You have to gain money through trade. So they have trade posts. This is all stuff I'll show you in the next game. And I hope you'll join me for that. And I don't know how long it'll be before I get started on that, but I'm going to try to make myself wait a while. I don't want to just jump straight into it. Because I want you to guys to have a chance to soak up and enjoy this LP. Um, it's... <sighs> It's a presentation issue. It's an old game, and it doesn't have very ex splashy or exciting graphics, and uh, sometimes the info dumps of text are parsed into these little tiny pieces that can appear on screen at once, and it's just kind of has a lot of uh, storytelling flaws in that respect. Um, but I think the central conceit of the game, that there's an alien species that is, like, crystalline in nature and is on a completely different time scale with other sentient life and predates them and doesn't even isn't even really aware of them as sentient beings and cannot communicate with them and just starts wiping all these other species out in self defense because we're literally burning them for fuel is just such a great central conceit for a story it's so cool um, I don't know what else you could do with it. I mean, you can't really get into the minds of the ancients as characters when they're literally lumps of, of you know, the strange material you use for fuel, but it's still pretty cool. Um, I have already mentioned, and hey, the LP in question actually watched the first video of this LP, commented on the places where he was mentioned, and then basically disappeared again. But uh, this, this all came about because I watched... Um, well, I might as well say his name now since I'm referring to his LP, but I watched Grimoth R's LP of Star Control 2, the Urquan Masters, uh, a game I've never played and probably will never end up playing because I watched a full LP of it, and, and despite enjoying it, I really don't see the need to play the game myself now, but uh, I had wanted to play this game, I wanted to LP this game for a long time, and Bobo had uh, certainly encouraged me to do it, and I was worried that it would be boring and slow. Uh, and I think by cutting out most of the mining, uh, things actually moved much faster than I expected them to, uh, honestly. Um, and there you go. But uh, Star Control 2 pushed me to do it. Star Control 2, I think, is a game have very heavily influenced by this game. Um, in some ways, it it speed things up. It speed things up and makes things more action oriented and intra and the combat seems like it's much more action oriented and arcade style and I probably would venture to say fun in that game, although it's often very silly with the the different unique weapons the different species have. But um the biggest thing to me that really stands out as being very different is um because there's some stuff obviously uh if Star Con if Star Blight had come about at a later time, or if computers are more advanced when it came about, I'm sure it would have had voice acting. Uh, and that's a big difference that you notice. Uh, but the big thing for me uh, that I really notice is the difference between them is the difference between uh, exploring a planet's surface. In uh, Star Control 2, exploring its planet's surface is tiny, you cross it several times, and you go around dodging lightning bolts and earthquakes, and it's just kind of a silly little arcade side game in a way. I don't want to sound like I'm criticizing the game too much by just calling it silly, but while it's kind of, it can be slow and unengaging, and I got very lucky in how quickly I was able to find um, the small egg on Vetapoxy and uh, the city of the ancients on that planet and this Spem and Nebula. Very lucky that those that those things went as fast as they did, but the idea that you're exploring the surface of an alien planet much stronger in this game than it is in Star Control 2, as a matter of fact. And this is one of those things I really liked about Mass Effect. Was you go down on an alien planet and you're in this terrain vehicle and 
you know, you can't just wander around on the surface. You have to put on a pressure suit when you do wander around on the surface, and you generally don't want to be wandering around on the surface, and you're exploring, and um, it's a big enough space that you could potentially get lost. People complained about that. They took it out. They want uh, Mass. I haven't played Mass Effect 3. Mass Effect 2 just turns into less than nothing but an outright shooter with some RPG leveling elements. They took out all the sense of space exploration, which really gave me a positive memories of this game like it, it, one one of the things i liked most about mass effect even though in effect it could be boring and sometimes you find yourself wanting to get back to the story and the plot but driving around in the lander in mass effect and trying to make your way up these cliffs and exploring these really alien looking surfaces really gave me fond memories of this game and i think um i would i would venture to say there's a pretty good chance somebody who was designing that part of mass effect probably played this game back in the day but anyway, that's enough talking about other newer games. That was Starflight, one of my most fond memories of uh, games gone by. And uh, I did my little bit to uh, help spread the word about this great game by LPing it. And um, honestly, though, I think the best way that games like this can be memorialized is when people who played these games and loved them uh, go out and... Um, I'm not personally involved in game development, but when they, if they literally go out and develop and make games that are similar to this, or that are just, just more complex and involved than like a typical Halo-style shooter, uh, you know, not every game needs to be Call of War. It's nice when there are games like this that have backstory and exploration and stuff, and if you're not a game developer, just go out and buy and support new games that have a sense of exploration and adventure beyond blowing shit up, and, you know, I'm just rambling now, but, uh, I won't be, I've, I can't imagine there's that many people who've watched all the way to the end of this LP who don't feel the same way I do about that issue anyway, that, that more games should have a little bit of depth to them like this one did, um, if you really disagree with me, I'm kind of surprised you've watched all the way through this LP, but, uh, whether you agree with me or not, and if you're still watching, thank you very much for watching, tune in for the next LP, sorry for all the rambling, and, uh, I really just can't think of a good way to wrap this, so I'm just gonna stop talking, um, hail and well met, friends of JG, I will see you somewhere amongst the stars, Bye bye